Hey, yeah. Um, I just came back from seeing X Men Apocalypse. Um, this is another entry in the X Men franchise that Fox is trying to keep alive because, you know, they need to be in the superhero game and complete compete with, you know, Marvel. Pretty much Marvel. Because, <laughs> you know, DC is very competing right now, so, you know. So right now it's Marvel, pretty much Marvel and Fox. So, yeah, this is a new entry. Uh, the introduction of new characters. Well, not exactly new characters. New actors playing the characters that we know and love in the return of some characters that we like from, you know, X-Men for a Class and uh, Days of Future Past. But... In this movie, we are delving in. It's now the 80s. And uh, we are catching up with where this new timeline after Days of Future Past is heading, essentially. Because if you remember at the end of the last one, you know, Mystique, Mystique stopped uh, Magneto from killing the president. You know, that wasn't her original intent. She wanted to kill Trask, but she... And she ended up, you know, saving the president and all those people. So now the news is like, hey, mutants are dangerous, but also mutants can be good because this lady did that and she become a symbol of hope and stuff for other mutants. As like, you know, a symbol of change. You know, they're talking about her in school, her and Magneto. And, um, you know, so it's interesting seeing that and um, essentially seeing how society is kind of reacting. They don't really focus on it a lot. Which, okay, when I get into my actual, like, good, bad, I'm just doing a synopsis. But, yeah, I'll, I'll touch upon that. But, essentially, we're catching up. At the very beginning of the movie, we see, essentially, Apocalypse. He see who his whole deal is. He's this ancient mutant um, that, you know, he practically pretty much ruled Egypt. You know, almost the world. You know, and after some stuff goes down, you know, with an attempt coup... He gets sealed away, and he doesn't wake up for, you know, thousands and thousands of years. And when he does, he sees how humanity has changed and all this stuff. And, you know, he's all like, nah, this ain't going to do. I'm about to take charge again. And, you know, things going to go down. And I need, you know, four m mutants to help me out here. As you know, for comics, the, his horseman of the apocalypse essentially you know he gets mutants and he pretty much upgrades their power and you know they serve him oh, sorry knocking my camera around and uh so he chooses some you know he chooses uh he gets Psylocke which is just chick she can create energy weapons or just make her weapon better <laughs> you know with energy uh Angel which is a guy you kind of saw him in X-Men 3 but they really didn't do it this guy Again, I'll get into that when I actually talk about pros and cons of the movie. But yeah, he has wings and he upgrades him. Uh, Storm, yeah, he Storm is in the mostly a bad guy throughout this movie. But again, I'm gonna touch upon the characters and stuff later on. And uh, finally, Magneto, uh, which he has an interesting story because certain things led to another. And so during Apocalypse, and his powers get upgraded too, you know. And essentially. The X-Men kind of just fall into this whole thing. They figure this thing out. So, shenanigans ensue. I know that's kind of hard to say. Shenanigans ensue, but better way to describe it. And now the X-Men have to stop Apocalypse from destroying the world and some other things he's trying to do. Now, that being said, my thoughts on the movie? It's okay. It's in, it, it can be entertaining. I found myself entertained a lot in certain segments, and that's where the problem comes. This movie doesn't feel like a narrative, like, okay, here's the hero or the heroes, here's the setup, and his and here their journey to, you know, the climax or whatever of the movie. You know, how this is the points, this is what they have to go through, this is their growth throughout the movie. It's just segments and events where these characters are kind of just dropped into and it ends with them having a big old fight. You know, it's just kind of like, hey, beginning of the movie, here's the characters, here's them doing stuff, 
Now they're here. Now they're here. And here's the end of the movie. And it, the pacing, essentially what I'm talking about, just was kind of sloppy. Uh, then characters. The ca characters, I didn't hate. Jennifer Lawrence is a mystique. I liked her in... I liked her in First Class. She didn't do a lot as far as action. Uh, in Days of Future Past, she did more, and I liked it there. This one... Because if you haven't been paying attention, Jennifer Lawrence has expressed how she kind of want to leave this franchise. And I think you can see that little bit shining through her acting. Like, she really doesn't want to be there anymore. Which I think this is in her contract anyway, so she's probably not. But it's a mystique. She changes faces. So you can just say she changed her face. And the amount of times, and which this is a complaint I saw, and yeah... She really, and this is mainly because Jennifer Lawrence expressed again, she doesn't really like the blue makeup being covered head to toe in that. She's rarely, you know, in mystique form, you know, to like the end of the movie, you know. She's mainly just looking like Jennifer Lawrence, and then there's times, like, if she gets, like, you know, it's not really a spoiler, get knocked out a few times, and, you know, of course, since she's not awake, she's going to transfer back to her blue form. As soon as she wakes up, she just pops right back into her normal, you know, human form. And you're like, oh, okay. And then at the end of the movie, she's all mutant and proud again. Got her blue face on. But, yeah, that's kind of whatever. And then the other characters, like Cyclops, Jean Grey, and all of them, they're good. I don't feel they were given enough to do. Like, for you to really get invested in the characters. Like, you kind of like the characters, but, you know. Uh, then the horsemen themselves. Other than Magneto... Like, Storm, Psylocke, Angel, you really don't know much about their characters. I mean, you kind of know Storm just because you've seen other movies, but you really don't know a lot about their characters. They're just kind of there for the for there to be a final battle. But really, the only person that has the most lines in the whole bad guy side is, I guess, Apocalypse and Magneto. That's about it. Other than they barely have any lines. I think Storm had the most lines out of, like, the horsemen, other than Magneto. Um, yeah, which is a problem, because you don't really care about these horsemen. They're just kind of there. Uh, let's see. As far as the good guy side, I guess, I'm talking about them. Uh, Sophie Turner as Jean Grey, I actually kind of like. You can kind of hear her British accent slip a couple times, because if you don't know who she is, she plays Sansa Stark in um, Game of Thrones. Uh, she's a British actor, uh, but I thought she did good. The guy, uh, the guy who played um, Young Cyclops, uh, I thought he did good too. Again, don't really focus much on him. Like you know, you see bits of with him, but you really don't see his character develop. You know, you see certain Cyclopisms, but that's it. Um, Professor Xavier, he you know James McAvoy, he really do wrong. Say it is um, you know the actor plays um Magneto. You know, they're, they're solid. They were solid. But the movie overall, Apocalypse. Oh, okay. The t title character, you know, the main bad guy, you know, you think Apocalypse, you know. He's going to mess stuff up. And he does mess stuff up. He's a really OP character. But ultimately, they don't really, again, focus that much on his whole deal. You know what his deal is, but they don't really flesh it out. You know, you just know, okay, he's this bad guy. He sees himself superior. He sees music as superior. Kind of. Uh, he wants to rule the world. And he has a scary voice. Okay. And, you know, so when he gets to the end where they want to beat him, say, oh, yeah, this is cool because, you know, he's overpowering. You wonder how they're going to beat this guy. But, you know, ultimately you don't care about the character of Apocalypse. Not really. Um, and he does kind of look like Blue Ivan Ooze. Cause that was a thing. Like, yeah, the picture come out, and like the blinding made him look more purple. And you know, saw the makeup, and people were like, he's Ivan Ooze, <laughs> and he kind of does like Ivan Ooze. His setup is almost kind of like Ivan Ooze, cause I just saw like Black Nerd Comics review of it, and he was saying his setup's even kind of like Ivan Ooze. I'm like, his so his whole backstory is a lot like Ivan Ooze, not like verbatim, but you know, <laughs> if you don't know what Ivan Ooze is, he's the villain of the Mind Over Powers movie. If you haven't seen it, look at it. It's awesome. Unless you didn't have a childhood. And I'm sorry for you. But um, regardless, um, the movie itself, again, the pacing, um, Quicksilver. Oh, let me talk about Quicksilver. Again, he's the best part of the movie. He was the best part 
of Days of Future Past. He's the best part of this movie. And you can see more of him a little bit. You know, he has this awesome scene, almost reminiscent to his scene in Days of Future Past. A little longer, I think. Yeah. And it's like, you should show, like, yeah, this guy's OP. Like, Flash OP levels. Like, as much as I kind of liked what Marvel did with their version of Quicksilver, I kind of wish they would have did this version. <laughs> Honestly, because I know they wanted to make that Air Quicksilver not as OP. And, you know, more like, you know, heat challenge and still kind of cool super speed stuff. This guy, he is insane. Like, I think even, he seems even more OP than maybe The Flash on TV right now, probably. I mean, he can't do all the same, like, do, well, he can technically. I guess in Dave Shabazz he did it, but, you know, he still, like, he's good. And when you see him do his scenes, especially one, I'm not talking about, it's towards the end of the movie, you know, it's pretty cool. You know, you're like, see, why didn't you use him in Days of Future Past? It would have solved everything. At the same time, now you know why I didn't use Days of Future Past, because it would have solved everything. <laughs> but yeah, he was awesome. Best part of the movie. But again, duh, it's only like certain, again, it's only certain segments that I liked. So, as far as I think the movie is not terrible. I've seen pe people like his early reviews and some people who they trash this movie. It's not god awful. It's not Batman v Superman. <laughs> Let's just get out, out the way. It's not Batman v Superman. But it has a lot of work. It's not as good as X Men First Class. It's not as good as Days of Future Past. But it's all right. Like if you see it, like if you're not like a hardcore comic fan and you just want to see an entertaining movie, you might enjoy yourself. Honestly, and I think because I didn't have high expectations, like oh my god, this is gonna be great, like. Deadpool had to be good. This one didn't have to be great for me because I had my fill with Deadpool and then Civil War. But, again, you know, so I didn't have high expectations, but it could have been better. It really could have been better. I can see how some people might be disappointed with this movie. Okay, that being said, I want to talk about some spoilers. So if you want to know my opinion, all right, movie. Yeah, if you want to check it out, go ahead and check it out. You're probably going to check it out regardless. But yeah, it's an alright movie. So, I'll say maybe 7 out of 10. I'll give it 7 out of 10. You know, not great, alright. Ah, spoilers. Okay, I'm going to talk about spoilers. Essentially, I want to talk about certain things that I, you know, I didn't really click with me as much. Like, okay, Apocalypse, you see his backstory, which, okay. This, like, set the tone as far as the violence in this movie. Like, you see, like, you know, essentially Apocalypse, his whole thing is he's not exactly immortal. Like, his body ages. So what he will do is he'll have do this little ritual thing where he'll transfer his consciousness into new bodies, usually of other mutants with abilities that he does not have. Because once he does that, when he transfers to their body, he now gains that ability as well. And he also carries the abilities that he has collected over the years with him so like in the beginning you see he gets a guy who you know he's a mutant and he he has healing abilities kind of like wolverines almost and which they said oh yeah now you're immortal pretty much but then a, a coup happens so people are like oh false god is in egypt and they seal his tomb and all this stuff and you see his horsemen that he has with him at the time they see how he they kill some of these guys like they're crushing them it's not like they're you know panning away you don't see it no you see them crushing these guys and murdering them it's insane, you know, it's that tone of violence, so I was kind of surprised and entertained by that, morbidly, but, um, yeah, I thought that was kind of cool, but, you know, that's all the really backstory and detail you really get about Apocalypse, is that, you know, that's what he does, keep alive, for the most part, until, you know, got the immortal body, but whatever. Uh, after that, you know, we cut to Cyclops, and you see how his powers manifest and stuff, and that was kind of cool. I still don't like, I mean, I, I, I kind of accept it because they really didn't go full on heat vision because Cyclops, it's not, it's not heat vision. It's like a, a concussive blast that comes out. Like, you know, it hits you. It doesn't, like, burn you. It just kind of, like, the force of it, depending on how strong he hits you with it, you know, it, it breaks you. <laughs> you know, it could hit you. Um, but, you know, he'll hit stuff and things still kind of get high, which I guess you could just say, well, the force of it just kind of heated it up a bit. I don't know. But anyway, um... He did that, and, like, you know, I like that scene. 
But after that, it's kind of like it kind of gets jumbled because you'll cut back between what the X Men or whatever the characters are doing. Not really X Men. You just see, oh yeah, here's Cyclops and them. And he's kind of fitting, getting to know Jean Grey and stuff. You know, but they're what they're doing is not really that important. Not really. Uh, then you see Charles David. They start picking up. Hey, something's going on over here. You know, in Africa and stuff because they noticed that you know Pockets woke up. You know, they felt a tremor, so they're trying to figure that out. Uh, the most interesting part, though, is Magneto, because we actually see where he is after Days of Future Past, and he actually started a new life, got a new name, got a wife, had a daughter. He's actually living a good life until something happens, which, you know, it was a workplace accident from the Tremor, from Dark, from what's the Dark Side, Apocalypse waking up, and he has to save a dude. He thinks he, he hoped he did it sneakily, though. But of course, obviously he didn't. And while he's about to try to leave with his family, some cops show up, you know, say, hey, are you the Magneto that most world's most wanted? And he's like, okay, I'll go with you. And they brought like bows and arrows and stuff because they know how metal. So um, he's about to go with them. He's about to go peacefully. But then his daughter starts freaking out like, no, don't do that. And she starts, she, her mutant power works. And her mutant power is she kind of controls animals. And he's like, oh, no, she can't control it. And they're like, oh, no, stop it. Oh, birds messing with him. And one of the cops, I guess, accidentally let loose one of his bu his arrows and shoots his daughter and his wife, you know, because wife's holding the daughter. You know, kids, both of them, they're dead. Magneto freaks out, freaks out, kills them, goes to his job place, you know. And he's like, oh, yeah, I got a snitch. He's about to kill them. But then Apocalypse shows up. He's like, hey, you're powerful. I want you. Kills all the people in the factory. Yeah, I'm going to help you. Get makes him more powerful now. He can control almost anything, anything that has any type of metal in it. Like at first, he needed just straight up metal almost. Now, anything he can tap into, like the metal that's in, like you know, the elements, kind of pretty much. So, um, yeah, he's like super strong now. <laughs> but essentially, you know, we get in all this setup, and all, again, the mutants they kind of just throw mutants in there. Like, yeah, you see them, it's cool to see them, but you know. You, they introduce Nightcrawler, Mystique, save Nightcrawler from this like underground fighting thing, and he's there, and he's just there, you know. I guess kind of like how he was in X2, but at the same time, it's just like okay, Nightcrawler's there, and now he's over here with them. And then okay, well now let's do this. Oh, now this happened. Well, this carries us to this next segment, segment, and then we'll cut between this. Yeah, and nothing really flowed. It wasn't like a journey. Like they're okay, something's going on here. We need to follow this. No, it's kind of like things kind of got certain things just got placed together. Duh, duh, and then it kind of just kind of okay. Now we're here. Now we're here. Now we're here. Okay, now we're at the final battle. You know, it's it's more you could follow an error better than Batman v Superman, but it's still kind of you know. So and then they kind of gloss over certain things. Like, at the end of the movie, okay, this boy in the movie, they're fighting Apocalypse, you know, things go down. Essentially, Apocalypse's whole plan is, you know, to pre pretty much completely control the world. You know, get what he, you know, so people won't portray him and have coups again. He's going to transfer his mind into the body of Charles Xavier. He kidnaps Charles Xavier. He's like, okay, I'm going to transfer my mind into your body. That way, now I gain your power, and now not only do I have all these OP powers, I can now go into the mind with his amplifying power or anything, so it's already stronger. He can go to the minds of every living human being on the planet and control them, and he pretty much will just rule the world. So they have to go stop him, you know, after realize, oh yeah, Charles Xavier's over here, we need to go save him now. So they go, okay, is this final thing, Charles Xavier tries to have this mental battle with you know, Apocalypse, and at first he's winning, but then Apocalypse was like, oh no, I'm power more powerful. So he's like, Jean, Jean, you know, I need your help. Don't hold back your power. So you're going to go full power. And I'm like, oh, and I was kind of excited when they did this too. She goes, yeah! And Phoenix, you know, Phoenix Force stuff. Like, you know, she goes full Phoenix. Owens Apocalypse. Apocalypse is like, holy crap. Oh, uh, he just, he just uh, uh. Holy crap, she's super strong. She just pretty much got more God than I am God. Holy crap. And you know, they see this and she disintegrates him. Like, they already were like, you know, pounding him and trapping him. But no, she comes up and she actually deals the killing though. She kills him. Okay. 
you know, put and kills him. And after that's done, you think she's going to pass out because she just did the Phoenix. She just used the Phoenix Force, or at least her full power. You know, this thing that they'll be super useful in the future, you would think. But no, she just kind of like, okay, yeah, it's over. And was like, oh, we did it. But that was cool, though. Yeah. That was, yeah. They're not going, holy crap, Gene, you killed a god. And you were, like, all fiery. Dude! No, they're just kind of like, oh, yeah, Gene, good job. You used your full power. You got confidence. All right. But, um, so, yeah, the gloss over stuff like that. Again, Storm, Psylocke, the horsemen in general, no real lines. They just kind of there and stuff. Thing with Magneto becoming good again. Yeah, he becomes good again because Mystique pretty much gave him a pep talk. And he thinks over for a minute and then he decides to become good. I'm like, that's enough to turn him back from the dark side? Okay, I mean, yeah, it was compelling and stuff or whatever, but yeah, that was enough. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, that was kind of like, but okay, whatever. Uh, Storm, because she realized Mystique was on the good guy's side and that was her hero because, again, Mystique became a symbol of hope. And he, she's like, oh, okay, well, it's the good guy's side now. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and again, the most fun in the movie was Quicksilver. Like, he had a scene where essentially the mansion blows up because Havoc, you know, he showed up for a movie, accidentally hits this thing trying to stop Apocalypse from taking Professor Xavier. Uh, hits this, like, engine thing connected to the X-Jet and blows up the place. And luckily Quicksilver shows up. He really walks on the scene. He's walking, but, you know, everything's slowed down. He playing music, still somehow listening to the regular time. He goes into the entire mansion, clears it out, saves everybody while it's blowing up. And he's just like having fun while he's doing it. It's the best scene in the movie. And, you know, then we have another scene where, you know, he actually fights Apocalypse. And this is awesome. Like, it slows down. He's like, yeah, I'm Apocalypse. Slows down. He walks in front of him like, it's a pull. He is knocking him around. You know, doing some Flash stuff. You know, this... I hope to see this stuff in the Flash movie. You know, if DC gets their stuff together. But anyway, you know, he's doing this awesome stuff. Then Apocalypse, of course, because you need to take Quicksilver out of the equation because, again, he's too OP. So Apocalypse is able to, like, I guess, track his movement enough that he can, like, he molds the ground because he controls the elements almost pretty much. He gets his foot stuck in a thing, so it slows him down, and he goes, break, breaks Quicksilver's other leg. He's like, ah, you know. So, you know, that's how they take him out, but... You know, he's still alive at the end, so he's going to be in other movies, hopefully. But, um, it's still a cool scene. But again, you know, then, you know, there's the, the climax overall that was kind of underwhelming. I mean, where was the apocalypse? We thought this was going to be an indoor world situation. We could stop him. It, things were high, but it didn't feel like this epic apocalypse that they were, like, pitching. And, you know, Jubilee's in the movie. You know. She doesn't do anything. <laughs> so, hey, but she, yeah, she looked like Jubilee, I guess. At least gonna have her do some fireworks or something. But now she she she's just in a movie. Uh, but yeah, overall, again, it's not bad. You can follow it enough. You could probably enjoy it if you're just going to find a movie to like sit down and watch, chill with your dudes. Oh, uh, there is that after credit scene. Oh yeah, almost forgot. Wolverine is in the movie. Because this is one point, one of the little places they go to, one of the events that happen is they have to rescue, you know, uh, Mystique, Beast, Quicksilver, and uh, the CIA agent lady from first class from pretty much Weapon X facility. You know, Stryker took them, trying to figure out some stuff. And while they're in there, they find Wolverine. You know, he's all caged up. They actually give him the original, the kind of like headset that they had on him in the comics when they were brainwashing him. They let him loose. He goes nuts. Start killing people. Blood. There's blood. A lot of death. Oh, a lot of death. You got to the kill count now. Yeah, it's awesome. It's pretty awesome. Again, one of the best parts of the movie. Just that segment, though. And that was awesome. Really awesome scene. But yeah, other than that, again, it's an R movie. See what your bros like it. If you're a comic fan, I can still say check it out because I don't like just telling people don't see it. But, um, this is, sorry, sorry, movies, I would say that, though. But this one is not horrible. I wouldn't give it as a bad a rating as people being, like, trashing it. But, again, it's all up to the, uh, the beholder or whatever. So, um, 
yeah. Again, 7 out of 10 for me. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. If you watch this, 25 minutes. God, I need to work better on pacing these. But yeah, thanks for listening to my review that I did because I'm bored. Out of boredom. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed day. Stuff. Hail Hydra.